70 years ago, 25 Colossi thundered across the Rockies, none heavier or more powerful than a locomotive weighing 1.2 million pounds. Designed for war, Big Boy 4014 was retired in 1959. It was left silent and rusting for nearly 60 years, judged too massive to ever move again. How did this sleeping giant defy the odds and return to life? And what impossible feat made its resurrection a legend in American rail history? In the shadow of looming war, American railroads faced a challenge that dwarfed anything they had seen before. The country's freight demands soared as factories ran day and night, sending tanks, ammunition, and supplies westward toward the Pacific. The Union Pacific Railroad needed a locomotive that could conquer the steep grades of the Wasatch and Sherman Hill, hauling more weight farther and faster than anything on rails. The answer would come from the drawing boards of ALCO, the American locomotive company in Schenectady, New York. Engineers at ALCO were tasked with building not just a powerful engine, but a machine that could tame the Rockies themselves. The solution was radical, an articulated locomotive with a 488 four-wheel arrangement. Four leading wheels stabilized the giant as it entered curves, followed by two sets of eight driving wheels, each set hinged to pivot independently, delivering unstoppable tractive force and four trailing wheels to support a firebox large enough to consume mountains of coal. The articulated design allowed this 133 feet long colossus to snake through tight mountain curves, a uh, feat impossible for a rigid frame of similar size. Between 1941 and 1944, Alco built just 25 of these engines, each one a singular response to the demands of wartime logistics. No other class of locomotive matched their combination of size, strength, and speed. The big boys were designed to operate at up to 80 miles per hour, though in service they rarely needed to go that fast. Their real strength lay in their ability to move 4,000 tons of freight up a 1.14% grade at 25 miles per hour, where lesser engines would have stalled or needed help. At full load, a big boy's boiler generated 6,290 horsepower at 35 miles per hour, and the engine's four massive cylinders, each nearly two feet across, delivered a tractive effort of over 135,000 pounds. Every detail was engineered for endurance and scale, the boiler alone stretched nearly nine feet across, holding enough water to fill a backyard swimming pool. The firebox measured almost eight feet wide and nearly 20 feet long, large enough to roast a whole tree. The tender, coupled behind, carried 24,000 gallons of water and 28 tons of coal, later converted to oil in the restoration years. Fully loaded, engine and tender together, tipped the scales at 1.2 million pounds. These machines were more than just engines. They were moving fortresses of steel built to answer a national call. The big boys ran more than a million miles each, day after day, season after season, through the harshest weather and the steepest climbs. Their limited production and unique articulated design set them apart as the pinnacle of steam era ambition. The sheer scale of their construction would later become both their legend and their curse as the world changed and the giants were left behind. But in the 1940s, nothing else on earth could match their purpose or their presence. Big Boy 4014's final run thundered across the rails in July of 1959. After that last journey, the world's largest steam locomotive fell silent. The age of diesel had arrived and with it, a wave of retirements swept through America's railroads. One by one, the giants of steam were parked, their fires dropped for the last time. For fording, that meant a one-way trip to Southern California, where it would spend nearly 60 years as a, mo a monument to a vanished era. At the Rail Giants Train Museum in Pomona, the locomotive became a fixture, an object of fascination for generations of visitors, but also a puzzle for those tasked with its care. The 1.2 million pound engine sat exposed to the sun and rain, its paint slowly fading, steel tarnishing, and seals hardening with every passing year. 
Volunteers checked for leaks, patched rust, and swept away the dust that gathered in the shadows of the boiler. They knew every inch of the machine, but their stewardship was an act of preservation, not revival. The engine's immense drive wheels froze in place, bearings seized, pipes and valves, once alive with pressure and heat, surrendered to corrosion and stillness. 4 of 14's sheer size made any thought of moving or restoring it seem beyond reach. The locomotive's articulated frame, so innovative in the mountains, became a logistical nightmare in a museum yard. Just getting under the engine to inspect a part required crawling through a maze of steel. The museum's caretakers could only watch as time worked its slow changes, recording each new spot of rust and each stubborn bolt that refused to turn. Some whispered about restoration, but most accepted the reality. 4014 was too big to move, too heavy to fix, too complex for any practical rescue. It was a relic, not a candidate for resurrection. Visitors marveled at the scale, climbing stairs to peer into the cab, tracing the outline of the massive cylinders, and standing in the shadow of the tender. Yet beneath the awe, there was an unmistakable sense of loss. The locomotive that once crossed the Rockies in a cloud of steam now sat motionless, its legacy reduced to silent testimony. For decades, the museum's volunteers stood guard over the sleeping giant, their quiet vigilance a tribute to the machine's history and a reminder of what had been lost in the march of progress. As the years stretched into decades, the story of 4014 became one of uh, endurance against the elements and the slow erosion of memory. The engine's last run faded into legend, and the myth took hold. Some machines are simply too big to ever move again. In the quiet afternoons at Pomona, with only the wind rattling loose sheet metal and the distant hum of modern traffic, Big Boy 4014 waited, unmoving, untouchable, and to all appearances, forever grounded. In the summer of 2013, a conversation began to echo through the upper floors of Union Pacific's headquarters. For decades, Big Boy Fordall had been a silent monument, admired but untouchable. As the railroad approached milestones in its own history, a new sense of purpose took hold. The company's leadership, driven by a mix of heritage pride and strategic vision, weighed the prospect of bringing a big boy back to life, not as a static display, but as a living, breathing symbol of American railroading. The decision was not made lightly. Restoring a 1.2 million pound steam locomotive would demand resources, talent, and resolve on a scale rarely seen in modern preservation. The risks were real, millions of dollars in costs, technical uncertainties, and the possibility of failure under the eyes of the world. Yet, as internal discussions deepened, the potential rewards grew clearer. A restored big boy would not only honor the company's legacy, but also capture the imagination of the public, inspire a new generation of rail enthusiasts, and reaffirm Union Pacific's place in the story of American innovation. Negotiations with the Rail Giants Train Museum in Pomona, California began quietly. The museum had cared for 4014 since 1962, and its volunteers knew every inch of the engine's weathered frame. But the vision of seeing the big boy run again, of hearing its whistle echo across the plains, carried weight. After months of careful talks, an agreement was reached. In exchange for Big Boy 4014, Union Pacific would provide the museum with a six-axle SD42 diesel locomotive, a boxcar, and a caboose. The swap was more than a trade of equipment. It was a handshake across generations, passing the torch from steam to diesel, from static memory to living history, with the deal finalized in July 2013, the project shifted from dream to mandate. Union Pacific's executives authorized the full resources of the company's heritage program. Teams were assembled, budgets approved, and the first logistical plans drafted. The company's Cheyenne Steam Shop, long the domain of Challenger and Northern Class Restorations, now faced its greatest challenge yet. For the first time in over half a century, the fate of Big Boy 4014 was no longer a question of if, but, but how. The transaction set off a flurry of activity. 
Legal teams drew up transfer documents, museum staff inventoried the equipment, and engineers began the first of many site visits to Pomona. The SD-42, numbered 3105, was prepared for delivery, fresh paint, mechanical inspection, and a final check before it rolled into the museum yard. In return, rail giants agreed to release the big boy from its decades-long vigil. The exchange was completed with a sense of ceremony, witnessed by railroaders, preservationists, and a handful of museum volunteers who had spent years tending to the sleeping giant. For Union Pacific, the acquisition was more than an act of nostalgia. It was a calculated investment in the company's public image, a statement of confidence in its technical capabilities, and a bet on the enduring power of steam to connect past and present. With the green light from headquarters, the impossible task of moving and reviving the world's largest steam locomotive became a funded official project, no longer a fantasy, but a challenge to be met head on. Before sunrise on January 26, 2014, four Union Pacific diesels idled at the edge of Pomona's rail giant's yard, Big Boy 4014, Silent for nearly 60 years, waited as the extraction team led by the shop foreman and a crew of machinists prepared for the locomotive's first move. Every command was crisp, every action deliberate. The articulated frame built for mountain curves now faced a gauntlet of museum fences, lampposts, and parking lot edges. Crews measured clearances by hand, tape stretched from pilot wheels to obstacles. Temporary track was laid, joints checked for gauge and level. Chocks and blocks, in place for decades, were hammered free, the sound echoing in the cold air. With air hoses connected and tension mounting, the diesels coupled on. The order came. Brakes released. Slowly, 1.2 million pounds of steel began to roll, wheels groaning against the rails. Radios crackled as the team watched every axle and pivot for trouble. Ten freight cars trailed behind, their weight essential for braking. The convoy crept forward, inch by inch, as the museum yard gave way to the main line. Every crossing and curve had been mapped and checked. The extraction demanded patience and precision. A single error could doom an irreplaceable machine. By mid-morning, 4014 cleared the last gate, entering the National Rail Network. The first leg ended at Colton, California, where the engine paused for inspection before the long journey east. The ferry move to Cheyenne, Wyoming, stretched over 1,300 miles and four months. The route crossed deserts, mountain passes, and western plains. Each jurisdiction brought new coordination. Every bridge and siding checked for weight and clearance. Crews monitored bearings and brakes at every stop, alert for overheating or stress. The restoration foreman rode with the train, overseeing the precious cargo. On May 8, 2014, after countless checks and careful miles, Big Boy 4014 arrived at the Cheyenne Steam Shop, intact but marked by age and exposure. Inside the shop, tension gave way to methodical work. Machinists and steam specialists gathered, facing the daunting task ahead. The boiler, the heart of the locomotive, required a complete overhaul. Every stay bolt, tube, and seam was inspected for cracks and corrosion. Old grates came out, making room for a modern oil burner. Bearings were pressed out, journals measured, drive wheels lifted from axles. Parts were cataloged, some for repair, others for replacement. Blueprints, gaskets, and tools crowded the benches, the air alive with the rhythm of wrenches and the hiss of torches, the shop foreman kept the schedule tight, balancing urgency with precision. Months of labor stretched ahead, but inertia had been conquered. The sleeping giant had moved. In the bright workshop, the work of resurrection began. May 2nd, 2019. The Cheyenne Steam Shop stands silent, every tool put away every eye fixed on the giant at the center of the room. Federal Railroad Administration inspectors check clipboards, their voices low. A shop crew member climbs into the cab and settles a hand on the throttle. 
The air is thick with anticipation, 60 years of stillness about to end. A hiss escapes from deep within the boiler as water meets heat. Gauges tremble, needles rising. The firebox glows orange, casting flickering shadows across steel plates and polished brass. Pressure builds. Crew members call out numbers, 275 pounds per square inch, 285 pounds per square inch, edging closer to the mark. A faint heartbeat begins, the rhythmic thump of the air pump, the first living sound from 1.2 million pounds of steel in generations. Steam leaks through the joints, curling around pipes and valves. Federal Railroad Administration inspectors watch every movement, every dial, listening for the wrong note in a mechanical symphony. The engineer's gloved hand hovers, then nudges the throttle. For a heartbeat, nothing. Then, with a deep exhale, the locomotive shudders. Connecting rods engage. Colossal drive wheels turn, slow and deliberate, metal on metal after decades of silence. The shop erupts in cheers, but the focus remains intense. Every sound, every vibration, every wisp of steam is measured and logged. The test is not just a formality. It is the proof that the impossible has been made real. Big Boy 4014, once a monument to memory, now breathes again. The resurrection is no longer a plan. It is a living, moving fact. When Big Boy 4014 rolled out onto the main line in the spring of 2019, the sound of its whistle drew crowds from miles around. People gathered at crossings and station platforms, some arriving before dawn just to claim a spot along the rails. In small towns across Wyoming, Colorado, and the Midwest, Families lined the tracks, waving flags and holding children on their shoulders, waiting for a glimpse of the living giant they had only seen in history books. Rail fans traveled from across the country, some even from overseas, just to watch 1.2 million pounds of steam and steel thunder past. Cameras clicked, cell phones recorded, and the deep chuff of the drive wheels echoed through canyons and across plains. For many, it was not just a train passing by, it was a piece of American history breathing again. Local businesses saw a surge in visitors, hotels filled up, cafes and diners bustled with talk of the Big Boy 4014 schedule, and souvenir stands sold out of commemorative pins and hats. Towns along the route hosted festivals, parades, and school field trips, turning each stop into a celebration. Preservationists and volunteers who had spent years dreaming of this moment watched with pride as the locomotive proved that even the largest relics of the past could find new purpose. The summer excursions of 2019 showed what was possible when skill, passion, and community came together. Big Boy 4014's return did not just revive a machine. It revived memories, inspired new generations, and uh, reminded everyone watching that history is never as distant as it seems. Today, Big Boy 4014 thunders across American rails, a living, breathing monument to what is possible when collective expertise and determination converge. In an era where much of our heritage faces neglect or erasure, its revival proves that preserving history is not nostalgia, it is vision. Every whistle echoes a question. What will we choose to rescue next? If you want more stories of engineering miracles, subscribe and stay curious.